this might not be the video that a lot of the Revit owners might want to know about, but... Oh gosh. What if I told you guys that you're able to take a Gear 8 three-star character, put it into your Sith team that's currently having troubles dealing with Jedi Knight Revan, and you're able to beat the one of the most expensive characters of all time. And my gosh, ladies and gentlemen, this is not... This is not a scam. Fallen Bastless Sean has uh, made things interesting. We're on my account right now, my own personal account, and I got the character from the Marquee event, and I was doing some testing during lunch uh, yesterday afternoon, and I posted some videos on Twitter showcasing my success. This three-star... Gear 8 Dark Side Fallen Bastila is helping my Trey leads do well against Jedi Knight Revan, which before were kind of struggling. And even my Palpatine lineups, my Palpatine lead teams, were benefiting so much from her. Where now it's to the point where it's pretty easy to deal with Jedi Knight Revan. And I don't think a lot of people want to hear that news, but I know a lot of people that are ecstatic that a character of her statue, a stature is doing so well at a low gear and star count. So what we're gonna do in today's video is I'm gonna show you some footage recorded by me and how I've been doing up against these fast Jedi Knight Revan teams on my arena shot. And I'll also post in some, uh, some footage from the community because a lot of people in the community are also having some luck as well. Now, firstly, you don't need the Zeta for Bass. So the foresight kind of seems like a very weak Zeta because Revan, uh, you can't dodge Revan's marked ability, but you might might be able to at least dodge one of the assisted hits. Maybe you can dodge Yoda. Might be nice. I'm not expecting this to be too much right here in terms of benefiting your team. But we're going to first talk about Treya. And Treya lead benefits the most from Bastila's unique ability here, Sith Apprentice. I've speculated on Twitter that I think Darth Malak's coming to the game. And this might make more sense down the line. But the reason why this is working so well for Darth Treya lead is she helps Treya survive in battle a lot longer. Because the, pro the AI is programmed to go straight for Treya right at the beginning of every single battle whether she's leading whether she's not Revan's coming after her and usually without Basta or the proper mods Trey gets wiped out the first turn or two this helps her survive a bit more she's getting some tenacity that's not too important but the 50 percent defense helps Treya soak up the damage a little bit more and then the rest of this is mostly benefiting Palpatine all the additional shocks are increasing the offense of herself and Palpatine but really I want to first talk about Treya because this defense is really important and in the footage you're seeing without the mods that I'm using right here for Treya which I'm actually going for all defense mods when I go all defense mods she's and combining it with Bastila's defense she's getting Treya is able to survive the first few onslaughts, sometimes it takes quite a few Jedi to take her out or she can survive completely and actually isolate someone and participate throughout the course of the battle. And keep in mind, with the reworked mods, defense, when you max out the defense mods, you're getting plus 25% defense per set. So we have 75% bonus defense right here. Plus you got Bassa's 50% defense she's giving to Treya when she's leading. That's a lot of extra defense right there. So Jedi, it's pretty much, I've never had a situation where they blow through Treya in the first five seconds. Sometimes it takes the Jedi quite a few times to finally take her out. So Treya is kind of becoming a lot more tankier under this type of uh, situation, this type of dynamic between Bastila as well as uh, Darth Treya. So for people that have Darth Treya and have been using her in Arena, this is good news. A three-star Gear 8 character is doing wonders for Darth Trey. Now, obviously, I'm not going to tell you keep right gear eight. Uh, you you want to get the gear level up higher, but it's kind of hard to get past this initial hurdle of gear eight because we have the stun gun right here, which is a big shortage in the game right now. But just it shows that if she's good at three stars gear eight because of this unique ability right here, it's going to get even better when she gets higher up with gear because she can at least be a lot more tankier and get a lot more damage. But three stars gear eight helping Treya survive that's kind of a big deal people we're gonna go from the bottom to the top because this ability right here corrupted battle meditation plays a good role in both of palpatine and atreya lineup the reason why it works well in a Treya lineup is because you're getting all this extra debuffs out there and as you know when you hit a debuffed enemy sith regenerate health so this just ensures there's a lot of good stuff out there for sith to hit but honestly this is the reason why i'm starting to prefer a palpatine lead over treya right now in arena when facing Jedi Knight Revan is because she's uh, spamming so many debuffs on the field between this and soon as you'll see with fear it just fuels a ton of turn meter for the Sith teams under Palpatine because when uh, when Jedi are cleansing either through Revan through uh, uh, Kenobi through Bassa through Jolie whatever the case may be 
it's just fueling tons of Turrimeter over to uh, Palpatine and his fellow Sith. And now this is where things get really good. As you know, she has a lot of can't evade type of stuff in her kit, and this is so important. And this is the reason why I'm preferring a Palpatine lineup over a Darth Treya lineup is because she, first of all, she can stun. You can't evade the stun. You might be able to stun a second person on top of that. So kind of like Count Dooku. And this is so neat. When her stuns expire, off these enemies, you're, you're applying all this stuff. You're the offense down, defense down, evasion down, speed down, expose and stagger, which can't be resisted. So it's automatically going to happen when the stuns lift up. So yeah, that's cool in and of itself, but the debuffs stay awesome. But one of the worst things is under a trail lead, if all those debuffs disappear, you gain no benefit. But because of the Palpatine leadership, we have how many? One, two, uh, three, four, five, six debuffs. That's a ton of Terminator being regenerated. If for some reason all those status effects got cleansed off of, let's say, Yoda, your team immediately just gets a bunch of bonus Terminator and can keep up and outspeed these Jedi Knight Revan teams over the course of the battle. And if these debuffs do stick and they can't cleanse, it's a real hassle for the team to kind of cooperate and work together. And then here we just got awesome stuff under a Palpatine lead, which again, I'm leaning more towards if you want to use this Gear 8 Bastila or whatever Bastila gear level you're going to put her at, having all the shock synergy is so important. Palpatine's going to sp spam shocks. Uh, she's also going to spam shocks. And if there's two shocks, Palpatine can use let the hate flow and quickly get to 100% turn meter. And it's just, there's a lot of shocks going to be on the field. And every time Bass is attacking a shocked enemy with this ability, she's doing bonus damage to all the other Jedi who might not even have shock on them. And it, it's just crazy how this works. And of course, the ability block on the basic is nice if you need to make sure you stop a cleanse to happen or whatever the case may be. She's just doing wonders for both of Treya and Emperor Palpatine. And depending on which way you go, either use Bastila to help Treya become tankier or using Bastila to make your Palpatine lineups super quick with all the debuffs. Either way, we're seeing a ton of success with the low gear Bassa, low star count Bassa. Get her up, of course, with some more gear, but it's doing very well. So as we're cycling through some of my footage as well as the community's footage out there, I kind of want to give you the overview of what's going on here. Now, the most important thing for me, really, when it comes to this is I try to make my Scion the fastest character possible on my team when going up against Jedi Knight Revan, because the problem is there's so many buffs, there's so much foresight in it. You want to make sure Nas has as many opportunities as possible to increase cooldowns. And if there's a, if there's a tenacity up or if there's a foresight or there's so much cleansing going on, it's hard for Niles to quickly get to Annihilate. The whole point of this team, with the Palpatine lead in my opinion, is spamming all the debuffs, fueling Terminator, and allowing Niles to take as many turns as possible because of all those debuffs expiring and fueling Terminator. And Darth Sign helps if he could be a little faster than Darth Niles. Now, it's not always going to be the case because Darth Niles gets all these bonuses when uh, there's debuffs being applied to Trey and Sign, so he might go before Sign. But as we see here, he has my very best mods, I think at least, and he is at 282 speed, which is pretty fast for a Scion, and I constantly want to get him to use Torment as much as possible. Get all the pains out there so that way we can get more shocks, we can get more stuns out there. Niles has all these debuffs to increase cooldowns from, so I think this is definitely one reason why I'm successful, but I've seen other people with different mod strategies, and they're able to get the same exact results, but this is my opinion. If you want to make this whole Basila, Palpatine, or Darth Trail lead work, I think a fast sign, just a good tip overall when going up against Jedi Knight Revan teams. Now I've tried some other types of lineups that didn't involve Darth Trey in the lead or the background. When going up against Jedi Knight Revan, this whole Gear 8 Bastila strategy doesn't seem to work as well because when you don't have Treya, Revan goes after someone else, usually Niles, and the team falls apart very quickly because Trey is not there to soak up the punches. But I tried some other things like Count Dooku. Count Dooku in place of Treya was kind of interesting because he's one of the fastest characters in the game. But the problem is, even if you mod him really fast, a very well modded Revan, plus his additional speed from his leadership, makes it pretty much impossible to outrun Revan and try to stop the Jedi from getting the initial mark. If you can fracture Revan earlier or whatnot, most likely it's a pretty bad, uh, or a badly modded Revan you're going up against. So, Dooku wasn't seem to work out too well, but I think if you're going up against non-Revan teams, I think it'd be really good for non-Revan teams. And I can see this being a really popular combo to use in Territory Wars, for example. The one thing I really wanted to try out so badly, but because I don't have a geared up Bastila, I couldn't really try it out, but I really wanted to try out Chewbacca inside of this lineup. And the reason why I say that is because before Bastila came out, the way I was beating Jedi Knight Revan was with Chewbacca 
an Atreya team, and Trey would be the frailest character on the team. She had the lowest health and protection combined, which means she got guard from Chewbacca, and this means you can't critically hit her, you can't daze her, you can't do all that other nasty stuff to Trey. so she was able to kind of survive the first initial onslaught of attacks coming from Mark. Well, if my Basta was geared up better, maybe when I get her to gear 11 one day, I think I'm going to try and I might recommend you guys put Chewbacca in the slot where Trey would be, because now Trey is going to be in the lead, Chewbacca's in the background, Trey is going to get guard if you have her modded for defense like I do plus the 50% defense coming from Basla and because she can't get critically hit Treya is going to be a super tank and it's going to absorb all these punches in the Jedi they're going to regret putting marked on Treya because they're going to get stuck behind her while the rest of the Sith are tearing your team apart with the fear the torment the, uh, the, the the drain force and all that that's I think the ideal lineup to use maybe in a couple weeks when I get this character up to gear 11 I'll report back to you guys but I think that is a lineup for someone to dig up. So if you have this character already at gear 11 or gear 12, try out Chewbacca, do Paul, do Atreya, do Nyla, Sion, Basta, Chewbacca. Try out that lineup. Maybe when I get my test account, I would love to test it out myself, but I think that's a, an idea for someone to exploit out there. Now, I don't know if I would quite recommend you guys put this character on defense at three-star gear because that's just asking for trouble. On offense, yes. Works amazing, it gets the job done, but when someone sees a gear eight Sith character on defense, they know what to avoid. They know probably not to get stuck behind a, a very heavily defensive Treya. So they'll work their way around it. And the, just to kind of show here, I made top 10 about, I don't know, seven, eight hours ago and recording some videos for you guys. And then uh, about eight hours later, I fell down to number 56 because when they see this, they're like, oh, a three star character with no Zetas, this is gonna be fun to go up against. So overall, it works really well on offense at a low gear count. So I don't recommend using this whole cheese composition for defense because you might fall pretty drastically. This is definitely a way above average for me to fall this quickly on defense in arena. And if you guys kind of paid attention again, this is just wild speculation. But when the in the marquee event, you played you played in uh, in the Star Forge, and that is where uh, Revan lost Bastila the Malik, and that is where Malik uh, took her on as his apprentice. And just kind of reading the kit here, we have Sith Apprentice right here makes me think that she is designed to be with her master which would be Darth Malik sometime down the road and there's a lot of interesting things in here that we don't know why they're here. Marked makes sense because she has an Old Republic tag, which is something new they're doing instead of giving it to just the people who are actually in the Old Republic. They're giving it to all the people in that era, it looks like. But what Old Republic character does Death Mark? We don't have that yet, which makes you wonder if that's going to be a Malak ability. Will that be a Darth Revan ability? Or maybe the, there's the HK47 rework and Death Mark will make sense. Oh, well, that's going to wrap it up for today, ladies and gentlemen. Man, just let me know what you guys think down below. Is this Gear 8, the three star Bastos? something that's making you happy, something that's making you sad for all your shiny Revens out there. Definitely polarizing, but whatever your opinion may be, she's important for the current state of the game for Sith to be competitive against Jedi Knight Revan. Not necessary to be Jedi Knight Revan, but makes it a lot easier for Sith to be Jedi Knight Revan. And uh, I think she's going to be important for the future of Galaxy of Heroes. Probably going to be needed for some special event, but let me know what you guys' thoughts are down below. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed me taking on these Jedi Knight Revan teams with my weak Bastila. And be sure to subscribe so you're not missing a thing. And until the next video.